Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about books. Books are valuable tools when you are learning a language. I know that not everyone loves reading but some people really like reading and reading when you're learning a language like English can be a very powerful thing to do. I always think that reading is one of the best ways to learn new words and it's one of the best ways to learn the English language because you can do it at your own pace. When you're reading, you can read slowly or you can read quickly and you can easily reread things. So, today's English lesson is going to be about books. I personally love books. So, I hope that you enjoy this English lesson about books. Hey, a person who writes books is called an author. A general term for someone who writes is to call them a writer. But specifically, if you write books, we would call you an author. Um some people are aspiring authors. When you say someone is an aspiring author, it means they're doing a lot of writing. They might have even written a book and they're trying to get the book published. But an author is someone who has written books and has published those books and has sold those books. An author is someone who writes books. Um some of you might be authors. Some of you might be aspiring authors. Again, an aspiring author is a person who um aspires to be an author. They would like to be an author someday. So, they are actively writing a book. Um as opposed to someone who would be an established author. An established author would be someone who has written many books and has them all for sale on Amazon and in various bookstores. If you are someone who draws especially for children's books, we would call you an illustrator. So, when I read children's books to my kids when they were younger, they were often illustrated and on the front cover of the book, it would say written by and then a name and then illustrated by and the name of the illustrator. So, the author is the person who writes the books. The illustrator is the person who does all of the artwork, all of the drawings, all of the sketches that you would find in the book. So, when did this all start? Well, a long time ago and I don't know the history of this, someone invented the printing press. The printing press did not immediately give rise to books. When something gives rise to something else, it means it allows it to start happening. Um the internet gave rise to social media whether that's good or bad. The printing press eventually gave rise to books but initially the printing press was used to just print single sheets of paper or pamphlets until someone discovered how to bind the pages together into what we would call a book. So, we have the printing press to print the actual words on the page and then someone would bind the book together. There would be book binding that attached all the pages together until you had an actual book. Now, Bob the Canadian (laughs) doesn't know the detailed history of how books were invented. So, if there was a slightly different route, please let me know but that is my understanding of how we eventually got books. The back of the book is called the spine. So, when you go to a library or a bookstore, often the books are on a shelf so you can see the front cover or they might be on the shelf so you can see the spine. The title and author of the book are usually on the spine of the book and this is the same word we use for humans, right? Your back has a spine in it. That's what holds you up. Now, interestingly enough, I have occasionally heard the word spline with an L in it to refer to the back of a book. I use the word spine and when I did some research, It sounds like most of the English speaking world refers to the back of the book with the word uh, spine but spline is something you might find in older writing. So, but spine is definitely how I refer to it. Not every book has this um but most books, especially books that you would read for research will have a table of contents. This is a list of all of the chapters in the book with the page number where you will find it. Um a novel, so a story that you read might not have, it'll have a list of all the chapters at the beginning but it might not be called the table of contents. 
Novels generally just have a list of chapters at the beginning. You could call it the table of contents if you wanted to. Uh let's see here. Um books definitely if they are larger books have chapters. A chapter is kind of if you are reading a book that is a long story, a chapter is part of that story. It's an easy way to remember where you are in the book. If you're reading a book, you might have trouble remembering how far you've read but if you can remember that you've read chapter two or chapter three or chapter four, that sometimes makes it easier. So, a chapter is a part of a book in numerical order that you could use to know where you are in the book. At the back of a book and not every book has this, there might be something called a glossary. If you are reading a technical book, if you are reading an instructional book, if you are reading a book where there will be lots of new words, even as an English speaker, I read books sometimes where there are a lot of new words. The back might have a glossary which is kind of like a small dictionary with only words in it that relate to the book that I'm reading. So, sometimes a book at the back will have a glossary. Um almost all the books that I use in French class have a nice glossary at the end of terms that students can learn when they're reading the book. En français, on dit lexique, je pense, um, but glossary. Um, there's a couple kinds of books from a physical description. There are hardcover books. These are books where the cover is quite hard and durable. You can see that these books have a thick cover. So, the cover is still made out of paper or cardboard but it's thicker than all the other pages in the book and it's very, very durable um which is why we call it a hardcover. Most books in our libraries are hardcover. Usually, when a book comes out, it comes out as a hardcover initially and then eventually, it comes out as a soft cover or paperback which is usually a little bit cheaper. Um so, a soft cover book, you can bend the cover it's a lot softer and more pliable. That means you can bend it. So, a hardcover book is hard. It does not bend. A soft cover book is a little more um pliable and bendable. Um I prefer reading soft cover books because they're lighter. <laughs> hardcover books are usually bigger and they're just heavier whereas soft cover books are usually a little bit lighter. And then Paperback usually refers to a smaller book as well. So, a soft cover book can be any size but for me when I think of the word paperback, I think of a smaller book, okay? So, paperback, paperback writer. Is that the song by the Beatles? Someone let me know in the chat. I'm pretty sure it is. Um of course, nowadays many people have an e-reader and they use the e-reader to buy ebooks. You can also check ebooks out from the library but an e-reader is a device that you can put digital books on. You can put ebooks onto your e-reader and then you can read them. I have an e-reader. It's called a Kindle. Um I like it. I think I prefer reading an actual book but it's actually a lot easier for me to get books on my e-reader now. To, when I go to the library, sometimes the book I want isn't there but with my e-reader, I can check books out online and usually, I can get a copy of the book to read. So, I really enjoy my e-reader. It's quite handy um and quite useful for me uh although mine does not have a light. So, I have to have a light on when I'm reading on my e-reader and then, of course, there are audiobooks. I do not listen to audiobooks very often in English. I do listen to audiobooks in French. In fact, here's a really good technique for you to use. If there is a book that you have read in your own language, I highly recommend that you get the audiobook of the English version if it's available. So, if you've already read the book in your own language, listening to the audiobook of the same book in English can be very, very helpful. Um I just find that it's a useful, very, very useful thing to do. Someone who really likes to read, we would refer to them as an avid reader. 
When you use the word avid in English before an activity, it means the person really likes doing it. I am an avid reader. That means that I always have a book on the go. I always have a book that I'm reading. I am definitely an avid reader. One of the reasons I'm an avid reader is because my mum was a librarian and it was very common for us to go to the library every week when I was a kid to check out books. So, I became an avid reader and all of my brothers and sisters are avid readers as well. I think for the same reason. In fact, they a couple of them can read faster than I can. Uh, my older brother in particular is a very fast reader. He's not a speed reader. He's definitely a fast reader though. We'll talk about speed reading in a bit. And I've used this phrase a couple times and it came up even in one or two questions. Um when someone likes to read, we say they are reading for pleasure. There are many different reasons to read. You might be reading because you're doing research. You might be reading because you have to read for work. Maybe it's your job to read technical manuals but when you are home on the weekend or at night and you read because you like it, we say that you are reading for pleasure. So, an avid reader is definitely someone who will be reading for pleasure, okay? And this isn't necessarily a nice term but someone who reads a lot of books, we will sometimes call them a bookworm. So, like I said, it's not positive but it's not necessarily derogatory. Like, it's not an insult but sometimes people will say, oh, my nephew, he's a real bookworm. He's always got his nose in a book. I don't think I have a slide for that one. A bookworm is someone who always has their nose in a book. Okay? So, that's a phrase we use as well. I should have made a slide for it. And primarily, I would use this word to refer to a child. Like, I might say, oh, my nephew is a bookworm. He always has his nose in a book. So, again, it can be used in a negative sense. Like, ah, he's such a bookworm. He's always got his nose in a book. Like, my tone changed there and I started to use it in a negative way. So, be careful with bookworm. Someone who likes books not necessarily for reading but because of their value might be a book collector, okay? So, sometimes people just like collecting books. People like collecting all kinds of things in life and some people are book collectors. They might read the books they buy but they might also just buy the books because they are rare. So, a book collector might be looking for rare books. Rare books are usually really old books where only a few were published. When when they were published, maybe they published a hundred and eighty of them have disappeared over time and there's only a few left in the world. We would call those rare books. So, some of the first books ever printed, if you have a copy up in your attic, uh that rare book might be worth a lot of money. You should go find it <laughs> and see if it is. Um and then a book collector will have a book collection. Someone who reads a lot of books might have a book collection. I have a pretty large book collection. Um it's not on bookshelves. It's actually in my basement in boxes. I should donate them to a secondhand store um or to a used bookstore at some point in the future. Um that would be better because then other people could enjoy reading them. But anyone who has um a number of books in their house, like a lot of books in their house, we would say they have a book collection. Oh, come and see my book collection. It's rather large. It's over here in boxes. Um books go on bookshelves. So, this is a bookshelf. Any shelf that you put books on is immediately a bookshelf. So, if you have a shelf and it has odds and ends on it and you take them off and you put books on it, it is now a bookshelf. Um so, a bookshelf again is a place in your house um where you can keep books. Maybe your book collection is on bookshelves. There's a lot more shelves in this picture um but a bookshelf is a place where you can keep books. Bookends are things that are somewhat heavy that you can put on each side of a row of books to hold them up. You can see these bookends are in the shape of little dogs, little terriers, I think they are. They might be Scottish terriers. But a bookend is usually a pair of really heavy things 
So, when you put your books on a bookshelf to stop them from falling over, you would put bookends at each end. So, these are bookends. If you want to remember where you left off in a book, if you want to remember how far you've read in a book, let me use the first phrasal verb again. Um, a bookmark is a great thing to use. So, you remember where you left off in a book. It's good because it lets you know what page you were on when you stopped reading the previous time you were reading. So, it's good to have a bookmark. Um some people dog ear. This is this book is dog eared. Some people fold the pages down. I don't do that. I don't like it when people dog ear a book when they put dog ears but this book is dog eared. Someone folded the page down so they could remember what page they were on. I prefer to use a bookmark or I try to memorize what page I'm on and then I usually forget. <laughs> so, sometimes I end up searching through the book to try and figure out what page I'm on um but I do have a few bookmarks around the house um that I should use. I just have to find them back. Um I wear reading glasses. I used to wear reading glasses when I did my live streams but I don't seem to need them with this computer I'm using now. I moved my computer closer. So, these are glasses that I wear when I read a book. If I don't wear my reading glasses, um everything's blurry. I can't see the words. So, reading glasses, um it's simply a pair of glasses that you use in order to be able to read a book. As people get older, if they don't wear glasses for other reasons, eventually most people end up wearing um reading glasses at some point. Uh, so they can read books. I started wearing reading glasses about five or six years ago actually. Um sometimes people want to read at night uh and in order to read at night, you might need a reading lamp or a reading light or a book light. Um so also book light can be one word or two words. So, it can be book light or book light as two words. Um but there are a variety of reading lamps or reading lights or book lights that you could use. Um I want to buy an e-reader that has a light built in but I'm not doing that yet because my old e-reader still works fine. Um I'm not looking I don't wanna spend the money on a new one yet. So but if you read at night, you might have a reading lamp, a reading light or a book light so that you can see what you are reading. If you go to the library, you will have a library card. A library card is a small card you carry in your wallet. It will have your library number on it as um someone who uses the library. You will have a number and you will need to bring your library card when you go to the library if you want to check out books. So, a few things about the library card. One is in Canada, I can use my library card to take out books for myself and for my children. My children don't need library cards. I think they don't need one till they're 11 or 12 years old. So, as a parent, I can take out books for my kids as well with my library card. Jen and I both have library cards. And then one other thing in Canada, a library card is free. It doesn't cost money and using the library is free. There is no cost to using the library unless you bring a book back late and then you have to pay a late fee or a late charge. You don't want your book to be overdue. When we check out a book from the library, we can have it for two weeks and if we don't bring it back, it's overdue and then we have to pay a fine. So, we have to pay a fine because the book is overdue. So, we try to always bring our books back on time. But again, it's free to get a library card. It might cost money to replace it if you lose it but it's free to get a library card and it is free to use the library. In Canada, almost every town and city has a library. There are my library card lets me use four different libraries, okay? I can use the four closest libraries to my house I'm allowed to go to. The only problem I have is the libraries that are close to me don't have the kinds of books that I like to read. So, that's a little bit sad. Um let me see here. If you don't want to check a book out from the library, you can go to a bookstore. So, bookstores are large stores. 
We sometimes call them bookshops and by the way, these words can be two words or one word. So, bookstore or bookstore, bookshop or bookshop um and it's just a place where you can go to buy books. Um I used to really like going to the used bookstore. There was a used bookstore uh, um close to where I lived um when I lived in Quebec and the used bookstore was a great place to go because I could buy books for really really cheap. I really liked going to the used bookstore. There are also online bookstores. An online bookstore is obviously a place where you go to buy the digital version of the book or the ebook or you can order the soft cover or hard cover version of the book and it will be delivered to your house. So, you would choose between do you want to buy the e-reader version and then get it instantly. So, you as soon as you click pay within seconds, it's on your e-reader or do you want to buy the actual book? Um so, I've been using that term a lot. Ebook and actual book. Um the real book, the actual book, the uh paperback or soft cover book. Um sometimes I'm tempted to just buy the real book to buy the actual book but usually I end up clicking and buying the ebook again because it's cheaper. Um this is the book series that I'm currently reading. This is a book series by Brandon Sanderson called The Way of Kings. Um so, oh, sorry, The Stormlight Archive is the name of the series. The first book is called The Way of Kings. I'm actually on the second book in the series right now. This is a fantasy book about a group of uh princes and kings who are fighting a long battle against um another force. There's lots of magic. There's lots of strange and interesting creatures in the book but this is a novel. A novel is a book that's written that is a story. It can be either real or or it could be either fiction or nonfiction. Um but a novel is a story that you read about someone else's life. Um most of the books I read are novels and I'm just gonna go through a few types of books. I don't have every type of book on my list today but we'll go through a few types of books. Um there are classics in the world. Um there are a lot of classics that are really really big and sometimes you will read an abridged version. When you read the abridged version of a book, it means another author or writer has created a shorter version of the book. If you're going to read some of the uh classics, they're quite big and some people will read an abridged version of the book instead. And then there are some books, I think I already mentioned this on the previous slide that are called classics. So, a lot of books by Ernest Hemingway are classics. There are a lot of famous authors from other parts of the world that have written books that are considered classics, okay? Most of your countries will have books that are considered to be classics. Books that are just really well written. They're usually quite old and they represent your country really well. Um and most of the time classics have been translated into almost as many languages as you can think of. That's the true sign of a classic. It's an old book, a popular book and it's been translated into a number of languages so that everyone around the world can appreciate it. Um if I was to have a plan for reading, I would love to read a classic novel from every country um from the people that are on my list of uh, that watch my videos. That would be a lot of uh, books by the way. Um we have something called coffee table books. A coffee table book is usually mostly pictures. It's usually quite big and it's usually on someone's coffee table. So, this isn't like a desk book like what was mentioned earlier um but a coffee table book might be um we don't have any Actually, we do have a couple coffee table books and they're about flowers. So, a coffee table book again is it's usually quite big. It usually has more pictures than writing. Oh, thanks Jack for the super chat. That is awesome of you. Thank you so much for helping to support my channel. Um so, a coffee table book once again is a large book. They're nice to have on the table. They can be a conversation piece. So, if you have guests over they might flip through the coffee table book while they're visiting and it might um help to um further the conversation. It might help you find something to talk about. Um again, there's fiction and nonfiction. 
So, a fiction book is not true. Fiction is the word we use to refer to stories that someone just dreamed up in their head. Um they're not lies but they are definitely made up. So, fiction is not true and this is where we get phrases like science fiction. This is stories about the future um and then generally there is um two different lists of bestsellers, fiction and nonfiction. So, fiction is not true. Stories made up just for people to enjoy reading. And then nonfiction would be anything that is true, factual, historical, based on real life would be nonfiction. So, I I haven't read this book but it looked really tasty on the front. Clean eating, the complete clean eating cookbook. I should buy that book. Let's see here. If a book is written by someone and they're remembering their life. It's called a memoir, okay? Often when someone is a leader of a country, after they are no longer the leader, they sometimes will write a book called a memoir and it's a book where they are remembering what has happened in a certain period of their life, okay? So, currently Barack Obama from the United States has a memoir out called A Promised Land And it's basically a book where he remembers things that happened in his life and writes about them. It has another name as well. We'll get to that in a minute. A biography is when someone writes a book about someone else, okay? So, this book is not written by Elon Musk but this book is about Elon Musk and is written by Ashley Vance. So, a biography is a book about a person, a real person. It is a non-fiction book. A biography is the story of that person's life or a part of their life. That would be a biography. An autobiography is the story of someone's life written by themselves. So, a memoir and an autobiography are very, very similar. This is Alex Trebek. He passed away last fall. He was one of my favorite people in the whole world on television. He was the host of a show called Jeopardy which is a quiz show. By the way, you should watch Jeopardy if you want to practice your English. It's a great show. Um Alex Trebek was the host of Jeopardy for many, many years uh and uh a few years ago, he also had a book out um that he wrote called The Answer Is which is kind of a play on words because he was the host of a quiz show. So, Alex Trebek wrote an autobiography. That means it's the story about his life and he wrote it himself. I'd love to see in the chat if any of you watch Jeopardy. It's a great show. Um so, we talked about The Martian and in the chat someone mentioned, I think it was Mode Eggs that mentioned that it was also a movie. Let me scroll back to see. Probably gonna be hard to find that but um The Martian The movie of The Martian is an adaptation of the novel. The movie is based on the novel. So, sometimes you will have a novel or a book and they will make a movie out of it and then you would say that the movie is an adaptation of the novel or you would say that the movie is based on the novel. Um people are always anxious to hear about new releases. A new release is a brand new book that's available to buy, okay? When I read books in a series, sometimes there are five books in the series but the author is working on book six and so I'm anxiously waiting for the new release. I'm waiting for the book to come out and for the book to be available for me to purchase. So, a new release is a book that has recently been published and that you are able to buy in a bookstore or online. Um right now, there is one series I'm reading um about a robot and I'm I can't remember the name but I'm waiting for the next book in the series. Hopefully, there's a new release soon for that series. Here's the Martian again. You can see it says New York Times bestseller. So, a bestseller is a book that sells really well. A bestseller is a book that tons of people buy. Um The Martian obviously was a bestseller um and the New York Times and other newspapers will have a bestseller list. They will actually list which books are selling really well in bookstores and online. Um bestsellers are usually the best place to look. If you are looking for a book 
to help practice your English. If you're looking for a book to read, I always recommend that you look at a bestseller list because some of those books are very, very interesting. Also, there are two lists. There are the fiction bestsellers and there are the nonfiction bestsellers. So, you can kind of choose between the two and you should be able to find the bestseller list online somewhere. Speed reading. Speed reading is when someone reads a book really, really quickly. I am not a speed reader. I read fairly quickly but I'm not a speed reader. A speed reader would read like this. Like they would just be, they usually move their hand along the page and they can just read super, super fast. I'm, I'm not a speed reader. I wish I was. That would be really, really handy but I am not a speed reader. Hey, I mentioned this a few times but sometimes a book uh is part of a series. So, the Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien was a series of books. It was eventually adapted and made into a movie. Okay. So, the movies, uh the Lord, the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers and the Return of the King. I had to look at the title. Um are based on the novels. So, the movies are adapted from the novels. Uh but it is a series of books. So, basically that means that um there's book one, book two, book three in the series and you can read all the books in the series. Um Modags asks, is speed reading the same as skimming? I don't think so, Mode. I think skimming is more when you try to quickly pick out parts. I think speed readers actually read every single word. So, I think it's slightly different but skimming is also a way to quickly read a book. Um if you buy uh books in a boxed set or box set, they look like this. They come in a nice little box. You don't need bookends if you have a box set. Um and I had to look up the term boxed set because I say box set but I think it's more common to say boxed set. I might just say it too quickly but you can buy books in a box set. You can also buy CDs and DVDs in box sets which means that it's the whole series in one nice little box which makes it really easy to put up on your shelf. Uh 